We've now got our positioning of the window put together. We did that by setting up the click event handler on the tray icon and then dynamically setting the bounds of the main window when it appears to the user. So our application is in a pretty good state right now. I want to do a little bit of a review on the state of our index.js file, however. So I'm going to scroll out here for just a bit. I'm going to zoom out just so I can see more of this file at any given time. So I'm a little bit worried about this index.js file as we're putting it together so far. You'll notice that inside of here, as soon as the app is ready, we create our main window, then we do some stuff around some icons, and then put in some configuration for the tray itself. Now, already for this very small application that we're working on, this index.js file is growing quite a bit. My file itself is at 43 lines right now. Yours might be slightly more or slightly less. And again, we really just have a bare minimum feature set as it stands right now. And so as we start to think about growing the size of our application and adding more features over time, I really can't help but feel that the current way that we're organizing all of our code, just sticking it all inside of the index.js file, might be kind of maybe not the best approach here. Maybe there's some other way that we can structure our code inside of our application on the Electron side of things to make sure that it's more maintainable and more legible. So in this section, we're going to do a little bit of a review on a topic that's going to help us organize all the code inside of this index.js file. We're going to do so by mostly pulling out some segments of code into some other separate files. Now you might be thinking, okay, Steven, yeah, no problem. Like we can declare this new tray in a different file and we'll set up this click handler inside that other file. Well, that's definitely an option. You know, maybe we can just literally pull this chunk of code right here out into a separate file. But I want to take a, you know, maybe a little bit of an educated guess or a little bit of an educated approach on exactly how we're going to organize our code. So before we start talking about this other topic, I want to kind of jump to the get to the chase here. I want to get to the very end. I want to tell you where we're going and how we are going to organize this code into separate files. So right now, when we create a brand new tray, like the tray that appears up here, we are using the tray class from Electron. So if I go back over to index.js, right here on line 21 or so, remember we took our tray, let me zoom back in now that we're actually reading this. We took the tray object or the tray function, the tray class, the tray constructor from the Electron library and we declared a new instance of it. When we did so, we passed in our icon path, which was some amount of initial configuration for the tray. We then tacked on some event handlers, or I should say just one event handler, to the instance of the tray that we created right here. But the, really what I'm trying to get at is that we're making use of this tray class. Now I know that this is a tray class or a tray constructor, I'm gonna use that term slightly interchangeably because we're using the new keyword right here. So let's go back over to that diagram. So right now we're making use of the tray and the tray we know has a bunch of behaviors that are intended to get that tray icon to show up on the top right hand side of our screen when we're on OSX of course. To organize our code inside of our application, I'm going to suggest that we use a little bit of classic object oriented programming by creating a object or a class called timer tray. Timer tray is going to extend the tray class. So it's going to borrow all the functionality that is already implemented inside the tray class. We're going to extend that base class. We're going to extend the tray in creating the timer tray. And then we're going to add a bunch of functionality to it that is customized for our very particular uses inside of our application. So in short, to organize the code inside of our application, we're going to use some classic object-oriented programming to extend one of the core units of functionality that's available to us inside of Electron. Now this is getting very much into uh, some technical details about how object-oriented programming works. So I wanna take a break and then come back in the next section and do a little bit of a refresher on exactly some of the, well, some of the core concepts of object-oriented programming in JavaScript. So let's take a break. We're gonna come back and do a couple quick exercises just to get a refresher on how classes in JavaScript work. So I'll see you in just a second.